take more questions if you want. But I'm not going to allow yeah, you to because no. <laughs> quite a lot of other people want to come make submissions as well. Thank you, Tim. Um, Sophie, Sophie or Sophie is not here. And the next one is Brendan. And I think you're allowed 10 minutes, Brendan. Yeah, you. <laughs> Welcome. I think they've told you five minutes, but you're allowed 10 because you're, are you a group? Uh... <laughs> Put an email that's about ten. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, Deputy Mayor Buck and Councillors, um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to my submission on the draft long-term plan. I'm Brendan Chase. I'm a commercial real estate agent based in the central city. So my other credentials are on the notes I've handed out. However, my comments and suggestions to you today are my personal opinions. So as we recover from the earthquake events of 2010-2011, our central city is in, a, is in transition, and this will likely be so for the next decade or more. Christchurch City Council is able to, and inevitably must play, a vital role in stimulating commercial activity in the central city <coughs> during this transitional period. An important stimulus for the commercial and social activity in the central city is enabling convenient and efficient access to it from all parts of Christchurch, of Canterbury and beyond. I concur with the Council's vision of a pedestrian and uh, cyclist friendly central city. I concur with your public transport and environmental objectives. I believe though that we must evolve towards achievement of that vision. Our present culture is rooted in car travel. And this has evolved progressively since the 1950s. With the ongoing development of greenfield suburbs, our city continues to sprawl ever outwards, a trend we seek to dimin diminish with the establishment of a greater inner city population. The central city needs to be accessible to the greater Christchurch population now as a destination for work, shopping and recreation. In this regard, car travel is presently vitally important for ease and convenience of access. Cars require parking at the destination of the journey to the central city. The council seeks to reduce on-street parking to enhance the pedestrian environment. Off-street, short-stay and long-stay parking is therefore required. This is probably the main tenet of what I've got to say. I encourage the council to embrace its view of the future, say 15 to 20 years hence, Instead about establishing now the car parking facilities it envisages will be required at that later time and allow our central city to grow into them. Doing so will provide a level playing field along the way in terms of central city uh, competing with the suburbs for workers, visitors and residents. Central government has stimulated the development of the first major office and retail buildings in the CBD core through the instrument of leases. Its leasing of large amounts of office space in these developments has been the catalyst for their construction and further large scale developments alongside. So it's my contention that the council can have an even greater effect by using leases to stimulate the development of parking facilities at an ideal scale and in ideal locations and in complexes that deliver the best street level environment occupied by shops, hospitality establishments and other commercial businesses. Uh, council provides all on street parking in the central city. It's a core business activity of council. So the opportunity exists for council to shape the nature and extent of off street parking in the central city through direct involvement and determining price and location and I think price is a really important lever. Parking is a business that produces revenue. Council can trade at the margin of this enterprise. Council, council can exert a huge influence on the parking market to achieve its objective of establishing a burgeoning central city population and economy. The potential economic and social benefits are disproportionate to the costs, in my opinion. As the population increases during the transitional period, 
price is still your lever, uh, just as it will be early in the transitional period when the market will find it difficult to compete because price is the lever. The choice to exit the parking business later, if exercised, should be a profitable one. As the Crown understands, leases are powerful legal and commercial instruments and when they're structured correctly, benefit both parties to them. It's my contention that embracing such an approach will propel us towards a pedestrian and cycle-friendly city with greater use of public transport much more rapidly than by restricting car access today. Provision of parking facilities by council will stimulate the private sector development of commercial and residential property across a broad scale, not just the large developments that we're witnessing now. And it would be good to see such development not dominated and compromised by the provision of parking within it. Our modes of movement in and around our city need to evolve, but it is vitally important that growth and development is not restricted as we recover from the events which have devastated our central city. So I encourage Council to be proactive and take a strong and positive stance in respect of car parking in the central city for at least the duration of this long-term plan. Thanks, Brendan. Jamie, did you have a question? Yeah. Yep, go for it. Yes, I did. Um, thanks, Brendan. Brendan, uh, you're at the coalface of leasing in Christchurch, you know, or ultimately uh, at the coalface of people either backing the central city, investing in it or not. In your experience, is the lack of off-street parking a deal-breaker for people investing in the central city? Uh, it is, but uh, more directly than that, it's a deal-breaker for potential tenants in the central city. I mean, I, it's hard to get the corporations to cross the river uh, and into the core. The objection that I come up against repeatedly is that there's no parking and access is difficult. So the business decision of whether or not they put their dollar <coughs> in their business into yeah. the CBD is you've actually seen them say uh, yeah. that the parking is the and problem, we'll, we'll, go to, we'll go somewhere else. Yeah, and it's surprising uh, how direct that is and, and who, who it's from. You'd think that maybe have a more benevolent view, but they see it as a real obstacle. OK, thanks. thanks. Paul, you were next. Yeah, that's an interesting observation about the tenants uh, and probably the most critical for the rebuild. My question is more around with our limited budget uh, for re-establishing car parking in the central city. Do you have a view around um, other uh, organisations perhaps building and operating car parks with the assistance of council? Uh, yes. Um, like, even now we're seeing car parking as being prohibitively expensive. And this is on gravel, you know, undeveloped sites. Uh, I think that price is a really important um, factor in terms of getting people into the central city. Um, if, the, if it's just the market that's left to work it out, that'll always, I think it'll always be, it'll cost just as much as it possibly can, um, without necessarily encouraging, you know, more people in. I guess I'm, my view is that if we could create that capacity now, uh, as the population builds up in here, pedestrian travel, cycling, and, and certainly bus travel will become a more attractive option. Rather than through restriction, it'll just be more convenient. OK, thanks. Yanni? Yeah. Um, thank you for your submission. And I mean, thank you for that, that solution. I just wanted to check. But what you're saying, you're basically saying the government's propped up a whole bunch of private development in the central city for the commercial buildings through the government departments coming in, and you think that yeah, they could basically it, yeah. prop up our car, well no, well um, help develop our car parking buildings if they took leases on those for the, for the car parks that they need for their office developments. I'm not suggesting you even need to develop them, I'm saying you could lease the car parks. Uh, I'm suggesting you, you could be the operator. Right. You operate on street parking, 
you know, no one else does it. You're in the parking business, big time. If that's to be restricted on street and it doesn't have the capacity that's needed for the more densely populated city we're trying to build, um, it, you know, if it's the market that's left to it, uh, it it'll be more likely to be price prohibitive. Yeah, no, I understand that. I'm just trying to understand the funding mechanism. If you were suggesting a funding mechanism like what's happened for the commercial developments <coughs> and that for our off-street parking buildings, one of the concerns maybe council has is the capital cost. Yep. But if we got, say, government to do what they've done with those commercial buildings and say, we'll take 100 car parks for the next 10 years for the visitors to the justice and emergency precinct, yes. then that starts to become a funding solution to a funding problem. It becomes a parking solution. Yeah. As well. Right. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Brendan. Thank you. And Brett. Brett Naylor? No, Brett Naylor? <laughs>